Welcome to Creation in the 21st Century. I'm your host, Carl Ball, founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. Today, you're going to meet some people very closely identified with the Creation Evidence Museum and those who've helped to make possible what we have on display. Now, the title to today's program is That Was Fast! Exclamation point. That was fast. And I think you'll see the reason for the title. Now, we have on display first a replication. But then we have on display actual fossil artifacts that have been excavated by this team. I want to build a foundation before speaking to a special lady who has essentially made all of this possible. But I first want to build a foundation by having you join me with the explanation. At the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas, we have a 20-foot wall. It's a wall called the Wall of Truth, the Clark Wall, or the real geologic column. In the textbooks and in the minds of most of the academics of this generation, in the textbooks you have an entire series of sedimentary deposits going from the granite through Precambrian, Cambrian, uh, the Carboniferous Coal, the Permian, up through the Cretaceous, Dinosaur Era, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and ultimately to the Eocene and epochs of recent time, according to evolutionary theory. Now, forget those names for the moment. According to evolutionary theory, it took 550 million years. Did you get it? 550 million years of time for this geologic column to accumulate and as the column of sedimentary rock accumulated, according to that theory, primitive life forms developed, evolved, ultimately to more complex life forms, and then to life forms we're familiar with, such as the ultimate display of man. That is the standard theory of evolution. But we have some major problems with that. We work in that geologic column. Uh, I, as director, and my associates on various continents actually go into the field and do work in that column. When you go into the field, you recognize that these layers are all conformable. There are no root systems between these layers. They were laid down without erosion marks, one system after another from what is called the ancient Paleozoic era, Mesozoic era of the dinosaurs, and Cenozoic of the mammals. Yet, until you get to the disturbance near the top, these are all conformable with no erosion marks. That would not be true if it took long periods of time. But what we're actually discovering is this demonstrates the year of the worldwide flood of Noah's day. It demonstrates one layer after another and another and another being laid down conformably and depositing various artifacts and fossils of once living systems within it. Watch closely. According to this evolutionary theory, as displayed in the various signs at various geologic areas of study and in the text, one foot of sedimentation equals six million years of time. A human hair is 0 0.0005 inches. At this rate, it would take 2,500 years to cover one human hair. Uh, someone has a problem. What we're finding is that from the dinosaurs 
to the tiny insects, to the gnats and the bees and the wasps and the grasshoppers and the crickets and the frogs, there was an instantaneous burial mechanism. That was fast. That's what we're going to talk about. Now, here we have a classic photo of one fish eating another fish. Only a rapid killing and rapid fossilization burial mechanism can explain this. It has to be fast. Our team returned not long ago from a special excavation in Colorado. I'll explain in a moment that we were invited to the general area by the Lacoste family and their relatives. And recently, as we were getting ready to excavate on the Lacoste property, where we have found all of these wonderful dinosaur bones, to date, remnants of 15 different dinosaurs on that property, all the dinosaur fossils and fossils found in a single knoll. I'll describe that a bit further in a moment. And as we were approaching the dig site, uh, the weather drove us out. But the landowner was at another site. She called me and she said, we're at the quarry excavating insects. So because of the inclement weather conditions, those of us who had made our way to the primary site, made our way to the secondary quarry site on private property owned by longtime friends of the Lacoste family. And as we did so, I was amazed at what they had found. It was explained there that things that we're going to display on the program today had been found years ago. Feathers had been found years ago. And when I looked at it, I was amazed. We have hundreds of feet of very thin layers. Here's our team working. Now, this looks like one big layer, but when you take the surface off, it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tiny little layers. This is material that has been pulled off the surface. So for hundreds of feet, this runs into the escarpment. And as we break those tiny little folds of rock, you're going to see treasures found inside that show that the burial had to take place instantaneously. And the covering mechanism to uh, preserve delicate feathers, wings of insects, insects in flight, that was fast. And that's the principle we want to get across. When you read in the biblical record, the creation account, it was all very fast. When you read the flood account in a single year, all of that pre-Diluvian, antediluvian civilization and the life forms were buried other than those that were on the ark. That was fast. So we're not talking about 250 million years of evolutionary time or 550 million years of evolutionary time or three and a half billion years of evolutionary time from microbes like bacteria to the present. We're talking about a very rapid period of time. That was fast. And I want to first invite a lady whose family has become very dear to us, Belinda Lacoste. Belinda, I've mentioned your name on this program many, many times, and I could hardly wait for the audience to see who the lady was. It's a pleasure to have you on the What's program. An honor. It's an honor. We just we had so much fun this last visit when we went, and it seemed like splitting that shell is just as exciting as finding dinosaur bones. And you know everything's a gift when you split that shell. You know that shell is hard rock, and that's kind of yes. like some of us are hardened. But just as fast as those sediments closed up those fossils, the Holy Spirit can open us up. That's true. And reveal the treasures in us. Oh, that's a profound statement. Belinda, you've been so kind over the years to let our associates and, and the workers get all of the fun. And after what? What's it been? 12, 13, 15. 15 years? <laughs> this year, you finally got to excavate 
on your fossil tree. <laughs> and, and, and that is my fault for not insisting previously that we get you up there. Was it fun? It was a blast. You know, all those years I was too busy babysitting, and now they're old enough, and the, the climb up, you know, is, 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 is oh, worth yes. it once you get up there. But what exciting to find such a tree that's been compressed. You know, you may want to explain it. But oh, well, you're doing a good job. We've also compressed. found the charcoal there. Keep going. And then also fibrous bark. You, you've made a major profound statement right there. Fossilized, replaced tree hard, then charcoal, and then fibrous bark, all on the same specimen. And how can that be? Uh, I, I had some NASA scientists here, and these are world-class scientists, mm -hmm. geologists, trained, and they said, we've never seen this before, it's a puzzle. But we also had a PhD present when they were mm -hmm. there, and he said, well, uh, let me explain. And he demonstrated that First of all, all of this occurs rapidly. We're actually able to colify material in one hour mm -hmm. if you have the conditions of the flood. Now, those conditions are organic material, water, clay, heat, and pressure. And in one hour, we can generate coal and colified material. But the big question that the NASA scientists couldn't figure out on your tree was why fibrous material, fibrous bark, would remain fibrous all these years. Whenever it was deposited, that's a problem. However, this PhD explained, and that was his background, that the resin in this Ericaria pine tree, the resin extruded out and saturated enough of the bark, it was its own preservative, and it was an insect repellent, and a preservative all at once. So during this period of time, that fibrous bark was preserved. But now this tree makes another major statement. As you know, above this compressed tree, there are at least 20 layers. And then uh, so many more layers below it. This tree is Ericaria pine. It grows circular. But... Here it is compressed into an oval, which simply means that it was still pliable while those 20 layers were being laid down over it. That was fast. Yes. That was not long, millions of evolutionary progressive years. It was fast. Those 20 plus layers form a part of the Morrison Formation that covers at least 11 United States and runs into Canada. So the whole plateau covering hundreds of thousands of square miles was laid down very fast. Only a worldwide flood Absolutely. can explain that. Absolutely. And you were present when these bones, now these are replicas, this, everything else is real. These bones were excavated on your property. The large bone at the bottom the original bone weighs 450 pounds because it's solid rock. And then I want the audience to see while I'm in your presence here, I want to thank you before this worldwide audience for having such a gracious Christian spirit and these prized paleontological treasures which point to the world before the flood and to the flood itself. Thank you. It's an honor thank you. to give to the kingdom. Yes, and to our Lord himself. Yes. Now, this wasn't found on your property, but it was found not too far away. Uh, normally in the classroom, we have a student just lick that with his tongue to determine the chemistry. And then once we have him lick it with his tongue, just a rock, but we have him lick it with his tongue to determine the chemistry, and then we open it up and say, I want to show you what you just licked. That's coprolite. What's coprolite? That's dinosaur dung. <laughs> well, and then the, the kid gags and everything else. But it is as hermetically sealed as any rock, so there's no problem at all. But here we have the fossilized remains of what the dinosaur was eating when he got impacted by the flood. Now, I want to step over here and talk to... All of these are dear friends. Ron and Melissa Pugh... 
you have been involved. We've excavated in Israel. We've excavated on various continents. And uh, how many times have you been out to the Lacoste property? I've been out there five times. Five yes. times. And you brought Melissa this time. I did. My first time. Your and first time. it was time. so much fun. Uh, do you like digging in the rocks and I, playing around with dinosaurs? I do. I well, do. now, we're saying to this audience today, this is not the product of long evolutionary ages like I just talked to Belinda about, that compressed Ericaria pine. But we have a demonstration here. Some of our friends were excavating, and these are friends that we appreciate so much. They were excavating at the site where you made these discoveries some three or so years ago, and they not only found feathers, but they found a tadpole with the string attachment of the, the, the body of the, the intestines that literally devour the tail of the tadpole as he's becoming a frog. All of that, including the string, was preserved. Can you imagine that remaining for a few hours or days before it was covered? No. That had to be covered instantaneously. That was fast. And that is an incredible fossil. It shows uh, the disarticulation of the internal parts of that tadpole. So that was a problem. What did... That's a problem for the tadpole and a problem for evolutionary theory. Uh, describe to me briefly some of the things you discovered here. Let me go up. Sure. Um, we found various leaves. Uh, in two short days, um, we were kind of taken away from the site because of the rain and the snow. Yes. So we had just a limited time. But in two days, Doc, we found 119 insects. The two of you? The two of us and 46 plants. And they say it's rare to find more insects, but in this area happen to be a different climate, a different yes. ecosystem. Yes. But we had found grasshoppers, crickets, and your eyes are probably better than mine, but we have a little flower here. A little flower. And we found a little like a, a rosebud. It's like an extinct plant that had the bud of a flower. Like, like a rosebud. And, our, and here, didn't you find... For your wife, or did you, your wife discover that, Melissa? I found that. Yeah, that one. That one was mine. <laughs> I found this one. I don't know what it is, but it's a very unique leaf. It's a little bit different from some of the others that we found. But this is floral. Also, there's some bugs on this. There, are, there are a lot of bugs on there. Uh, buds, buds and bugs, yes. both. Well, uh, and you found some gnats, some insects, and uh, your great nephew made a major discovery. Kenny, yep. Rob and his two boys, Kenny and Trevor, met us at the site, and with his luck, he found a lot of good, good items. <laughs> what, what was your favorite of what you discovered there? The, the rosebud for your bride? I think so. Yeah, the rosebud and the cricket was, was a very neat. The cricket was very neat, yes, and the grasshopper. It, and the leaves, but the rosebud for your bride. Rosebud, yeah. It is. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Now, uh, Dale, Dale Muska, you are our Messianic Jew master craftsman finishing out the museum. You and your associate Wayne are doing a wonderful job. Now, you experienced your first excavation with yes, us. Sir. Yes, sir. And uh, here, uh, would you describe... Now, this came from Texas, but it's like many we find out there. Would you describe what this is? This is a gastrolith. This stone is uh, eaten, swallowed by the uh, dinosaurs, and is kept in its craw. And here's another one quite similar that was actually found on the excavation. Yes. And they rub together to help digest the food that the uh, dinosaurs eat. And, and the primary food that they were digesting was fibrous uh, vegetation, right? What and it required this, right? Anyway, it hollows out and it gets a waxy feel to it from uh, from the chemicals in the stomach. Yes. Now, would you describe very quickly what is here on the table? For instance, that looks like a grasshopper. It is a grasshopper. Its, it's head is in this direction. Abdomen is out this way. And who discovered that? Uh, I think Kenny. Now I think Ron Pugh. 
discover the grasshopper. Was it wrong? Kenny oh, okay. got the big major find. Yes, yes we get had, to the climax. Kenny. Right. Now, right here, Doc, is a down feather. Uh, you're kidding me. No, no, I'm not kidding you. It's a down feather. You can see it's quite small. Now, you know, a uh, down feather uh, quite often uh, during disturbance just flies in the air. Right. Just airborne. Right. A down feather uh, has the tendrils broadening. Is that the complete down feather? It is a complete down feather. How long do you think that down feather could remain on the surface of that mud that turned to rock very quickly? How long could it remain there and, and have all of that detail? Not very long. Oh, you mean that was fast. Yeah, it was very fast. Not only was it caught in a layer, but the next layer came fast. Yes, and flattened it. And flattened it and preserved it. What do you have here? Uh, just a leaf that I found the other day while taking apart some of the other slabs that came home whole. And uh, this one popped out. We have both the leaf and the relief. Positive and negative. Right. And extreme detail of the structure of the leaf. Marvelous. Now, Ron Pugh referred to his great nephew, Kenny, in making the master discovery. And here's a photo of that master discovery. It's a frog. And the frog is eating something like a locust and got caught along with a flowering plant on the side and a little arachnid, a little spider. But this frog got caught while he was actually eating the locust-like creature. One of our researchers earlier today showed me not only the edge of the mouth. Let me show this to Ron. Your nephew discovered this. Not only the edge of the mouth, but the ridge of the teeth. There's just a ridge of teeth, teeth that frog has. Yes. For hold, grabbing on and holding on to that insect. Yes. Yes. And in, he was eating the insect, and he got caught in the process. In the process. His last uh, meal. If he just got caught in that mud, Melissa, if he just got caught in the mud and was trying to wiggle out, and he might turn loose of that winged insect, how long do you think he would remain there? Not long. And in order to preserve him intact and to compress him in place, how long would that take? Blink of an eye. Just like that. That was fast. Now, climax to the program. Dale, you had the privilege of holding these. Yes. What? do you have? That is a photograph. This is the real thing. We have the real thing and the relief, both. The relief, yes, positive both. and negative. Right. And uh, Kenny found these up on the hill, and he come running down with it like so and opened it up. And of course, we all had a heart attack. Yes. Sure. So here we have the frog with his teeth, the frog in the process of having lunch, but he got caught, and the lunch got caught. That was fast. The entire point of the program today is a statement that is consistent with the biblical record. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. One of our primary consultants, Dr. Ed Boudreau, has recently demonstrated scientifically that within a matter of hours, as the Spirit of God hovered over and manipulated the molecules of water, all of the elements, including radioactive elements we know, in their earthbound proportions could have been and were created by nuclear action in a matter of hours. That was fast. When we come to the fossil record, the geologic column, we have a 20-foot wall. That did not take 550 million years of evolutionary time to lay down. The facts show the conformable layering, the polystrate fossils between one layer extending to another and another are so specific. That had to be laid down during a single epochal year of flooding of the planet. That was fast. 
But now we come to something more important than all of the fossils and the flood. That is the work of the Spirit of God in your heart. You see, it takes us a long time to respond, but it doesn't take a long time for God to do His work. The Bible says, If any man will hear his voice and open the door, I will come in. You're passed from death unto life. That's fast. Right now, if you recognize that by nature and by practice, you're a sinner. If you recognize that Jesus died for you and shed his blood for you and for your sin. If you recognize that he went to Calvary, was buried rose again and is alive, God's precious Son, right now, if you recognize that, would you pray this simple prayer with me? Just pray it from your heart. Lord Jesus, thank you for caring enough to go to the cross. Thank you for dying for me. Right now, I open my heart to you. Lord Jesus, come in right now and save me. And I will serve you with all my heart for all eternity. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. 